so here's a weird one for you. Um, ivory ribbon ribbons. So I had these two mics from two different companies. The front of the mic name is right there for this company. And then for this mic, I just assumed that this is the front of the mic as well. There's the company's name and there's the logo. But when I re-ribbon these mics without hearing them, I was just concerned because internally, uh, this looks like the front and it was like this. This side looked like it was the rear. And as I looked at them, because I just saw the logo and the logo, so I re-ribbon these. And then I thought to myself, what if the, polar uh, the polarity would be, um, if this was the front of mic, it would be positive, and then the rear side would be negative. And this would be, once again, positive, negative. So before I ship these out, I wanted to make sure that internally that was correct. So even though I look at these, and I changed my label so the front to front, but initially, this looked like it was the front. When I changed the mic up, put new ribbons in it, I always check them. And even though I check them on my Pro Tools session, it's really hard to tell if it would be in phase or not. I guess I could put some kind of scope or graph on it, but I really wanted to make sure that that was correct before I sent them out. So initially I had this sticker right here, but I didn't feel comfortable sending these out until I was really positive that one side was uh, positive, which should be the front, and then negative would be that. And what would be that positive and negative? If you look at your speakers, um, if the sound is like anything that's in phase or the polarity is correct on a drum set, your kick drum would be moving out. And if the polarity or something was wrong, and let's say your, your kick drum was out of phase with your overheads, the kick drum would be pushing air back. So one pushes air forward positive, one pushes air rear that's negative. So if you use a, a DI bass and a bass microphone, usually the DI's um, out of phase, you have to switch the polarity on it. So you hit the switch and you flip it. I'm old school, so I say phase, polarity. You know, I know there's a difference, but I'm just talking to you like straight up right now. So I had these two mics. Initially, I had the sticker there. I could not tell if these were, if the sound was moving forward or back once you put it into my Neve. So I have these. This is called a cricket. And the way the cricket works is this side has a built-in microphone in there. That little hole in the top right there, I'm assuming, is a microphone. And then this one has a speaker. And so what I do is I turn this on. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's making a cricket sound. So the goal is, I'll get the microphone. This, I'm assuming this is the gonna be positive side. I'll lay it on top of the cricket, put this through my preamp, and then I will go to my ATC, and with the microphone side, put that against my speaker, and it will flash green or red. Green will be positive, and red will be negative. So I am should be able to find out if these ribbon mics are correct in their sound. And it actually works really good on, if you have a full drum set mic'd up, you can have an assistant or your kid or your mom or your dad or your brother or one of the guys in the band. Uh, they can walk up to the microphones and you can start, like if this is on the overhead, you'd put this on the overhead and then on this side of the room, or wherever your ice room is, you would have this microphone, I mean this box, Cricut, in front of your speaker. It will flash green or red and tell you if your mic setup, at least coming out of your speakers, is the polarity is correct on all your microphones. Now, some of it, you could say, well, why do you need to use that? You could use a, a plug-in. Sometimes when you're moving fast in a session and you've set up a really elaborate setup, it's nice to know if something coming into your system is, is in phase or out of phase or the polarity is flipped. Now, a lot of old vintage mics are pin too hot and they're different. So I have some AKG mics from the 60s. If I put that mic up, let's say I put up, let's say this was like a, sh a brand new Shure mic. Uh, if I put the Cricut on this and then ran off the speaker, it would flash green, which is correct. 
Then if I ran my AKG from the 1960s, did the same thing, it would be red because it's not. So that tells me that when I'm putting my stuff into my preamps, I'm going to flip the polarity on that microphone because for whatever reason, it's wired backwards. So that really works good with old mics and uh, vintage mics. And it lets you know your system. I think there's a way of, of, you can cable test it because there's a mic in and mic out. But right now, these are technically can be made, you know, a room apart as long as there's a mic cable and a snake. So these aren't connected. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that right now. So give me one so second. I put my mic in and you can hear me kind of coming through the speakers a little bit. I have my mic sitting there. I'm going to put on the Cricut. Now, out of that speaker will be a click. So I'm literally going to just lay the speaker right on my ribbon. You can hear that coming through my speakers. So now I have it all the way to the left so I won't get that much feedback. So now that microphone, which I'm assuming would be the front, which would be positive, but this box is making the sound of that noise going into my microphone. Then I'm going to turn on the receiving box. Sorry, can't put it any louder. So now I'm going to take off the cricket, which is making noise out of that speaker. I'm going to flip the mic around. Technically, I want this the polarity to be the opposite. So this is the back side of the ribbon. You can hear it coming through my sound system. So this should be red. There it is, red. So I have another mic. I'm gonna do the same thing. Let me switch out mics. All right, so now I switched another mic. And I've already changed, like I said, I, the way I know them is by just putting the sticker of my company, Original Gravity Wave Microphone Company, which is OGMC on the front. I just wanted to make sure as I labeled these so I can tell the artist that's getting these mics, this would be considered technically the front. So I'm gonna put the cricket on it, which is making a noise. Make sure I got my volume up, got a feedback. Now, technically, this should be green. All right, it's a good sign. Now I'm going to get the mic, remove the cricket. And I'm gonna be flipping it over. You can hear me talking. Put the cricket on it. Now, using the cricket off my speaker, this should be red. There it is. I can't tell you what peace of mind I get from this. It makes me really happy. And what does this sound like? Check one, two, three. Hey, checking ribbon mic. This is a OGMC re-ribbon. This is the front of the ribbon, which is on the Cricut positive. If I flip it around, Sounds the same, this is negative. You can't tell technically by the sound, but the wave would be reversed. There you go front, there you go back. There it is. Checking some microphones, and like I said, I did solve the problem because when I built these, built these two, when I re-ribbon these, um, I was kind of positive on the internals that these had to be switched. And I was curious because the screws even though it's a different company, it's the same microphone and the screws were opposite. So I'm not sure why or how those are flipped opposite when they were made. But if you know what you're doing and you have a Cricut, that totally helps you out. And like I said, I haven't used it in all its ways, but there's a really cool little graph how you would use it on different sound sources. Obviously you can cable test it by putting a cable into there. And, um, and like I said, this is the one that's making the sound. I don't know if you can hear that, but anyways, that's making a little cricket sound. So that's my video for today. I did find myself in a dilemma of curious and I haven't used this in about a year. 
but if I'm gonna make a ribbon mic for someone, I definitely wanted it to be correct. And the only way I could do that was to find out if the front was positive and then the rear of the ribbon should be negative, which all ribbons are like that. So um, there it is. That's my deal for the day. People are gonna write in and go polarity, negative, positive. All I know is I'm old school. And like, if I go to my switch, I'll say, oh, I'm gonna flip the phase. That makes people mad <laughs> because it's flipping the polarity. I don't know. There it is. guys, I'm Cole and I own a business called Colpix Vintage where I do repairs on ribbon and dynamic microphones. Manny asked me to come on and give just a quick pitch of my services. So if you need any help with any ribbons or dynamics, I work on a lot of AKG D12s, anything like that, any microphone that you need re-ribboned, I can help you out. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video of Manny's mic locker. I'm certainly pumped to check out all the videos. And yeah, again, if you need any help with any microphone repairs, I'm here to help. You can go to my website, colpixvintage.com. Who's pretty on the inside? Who's pretty on the outside?